Clash of Clans has changed drastically over the years. Have they made the game better or worse? Today we're going to discuss everything with a main focus on heroes, hero equipment and events which funnily enough Clash of Clans lied to us about. Let's go back in time, all the way to 2019, the Town Hall 12 Cup Finals. This was a LAN event in Helsinki. We've got a live attack from Lex Nose here. Uh, I love you, Lex. And he's coming in with a Sui Lalo. Now, I've deliberately picked this attack because Sui Lalo kind of shows the strength of heroes better than any other army in the game. And look at this Barbarian King. Aside from his uh, striking animation being terrible, have a look at how little value he's going to get here. I think people genuinely forget this, but the king was always a funneling hero. Look at how long this ability lasts, by the way. It's done already. He didn't generate that many barbs as well. This is what the barb king was used for, to funnel for the queen. There was none of this giant gauntlet nonsense, none of this self-healing that can keep him alive for so long. And that's kind of going to be the main talking point about today's video. My hypothesis is that Heroes are far too strong and it's not good for the game because, you know, you have to bring your heroes to your attack, right? There is no strategy in whether you bring your heroes or not. Of course you bring them. They're your heroes. Whereas when you bring, say, other troops in your army, there is strategy in that. You know, I don't have to bring an Electro Titan every attack. So coming up with the best army comp for the base is genuine strategy. By the way, gotta love the terrible camera work here showing nearly none of this Sui. But have a look at this Queen ability. Not going to last long at all. Here we go. She is visible again. She will just get this air defense. But look at that. That is nearly... That is such little Sui value. If you did that at the moment at Town Hall 16, you would be laughed at. You can clear nearly half a base at Town Hall 16. Kind of like we saw fr from Invincible LG, our recent video on uh, the overgrowth with Sui Lalo. So we got the Lalo coming in here. And I want you to watch yet again how long this Warden ability lasts. It's not going to be long at all. So the invisibility comes, and there you go. It's all over. Now his loons have got to take down the rest of the base. Now he gets really unlucky here. The warden goes and follows the E-drag, which makes no sense. There's 10 loons in the core of the base here. But the, the attack doesn't go ideally, and therefore it's going to come in as a fail. Sorry for bringing this up, Lex, if you do watch this. This was not my... This was not what I was going for, but I wanted to show you the sort of power of heroes at Town Hall 12. Also notice... There's no royal champion, and with the speaking of that, let's jump to Town Hall 13. And now we're at Town Hall 13. This is from the championship final between alternate attacks and Queen Walkers, and we've got Boom here coming in with the Zap Lalo. I deliberately pick Zap Lalo because yet again, you get a really good feel of how strong the heroes are, and have a look at this Sui here. So Boom, one of the best players in the world at the time, uses a Yeti on one side of funnel, a Baby Dragon Loon on the other. We're gonna go King, Queen, and Wall Wrecker into this town hall and cc here and have a look at how much value the heroes get now i'm so sorry this is zoomed out maybe our editor can zoom in for us here because this is the worst cameraman in history but have a look at this have a look so we put the poison spell down to help deal with the defensive cc headhunters the uh wall wrecker opens um the town hall does go down to the yetis but the defensive rc does not the poison spell runs out it didn't really last that long uh so it was a lot harder to deal with the cc and look at how much value this sui gets next to nothing and this is from one of your best players in the world. Heroes, incredibly bal balanced. But we haven't talked about the new hero that came at Town Hall 13, which was the Royal Champion. But have a look at what on earth. Zoom in, cameraman. There we go. Finally. Jeez, I can't believe it took that long. But you got the new hero at Town Hall 13, which th was the Royal Champion. And the Royal Champion's speciality was taking down the back end of the base. And I think this took a little bit of skill out of the game. Yes, I love the Royal Champion. Cool hero. But at the lower town halls, how you took down in the back end of the base was a genuine consideration. Whereas at high, ever since this Royal Champions come out, as you see her come in here, uh, you've never really thought about it as much. You just use the Royal Champion for it. Her ability comes in, but notice this. She's really not doing that much damage at level 20. She doesn't have the fox or anything to make her invisible. No pet or nothing. And she goes down super quickly. So yes, did take a bit of skill out of the game in terms of how you took down the back and the base. Because you didn't need bats or like the stone slammer that you saw some of the time at uh, the lower town halls. But she's not overpowered. She gets completely and utterly countered there and doesn't take a lot of the base. But now... We move to Town Hall 14. 
And now we come along to Town Hall 14 and we have the introduction of pets. Now, I'd be interested to see if you guys think this was a good thing for the game. Cool concept. I can understand why they wanted to give us something new to farm, but ever since pets have been in the game, heroes have not been balanced. By the way, another thing that came to the game just after the Town Hall 13 World Championship, but just before Town Hall 14, was Invis spells. So you're going to see Rakira's here. These were some attacks he did on my channel using the Invis spell. I'd be curious to see what you all think about the Invis spell, whether you think it's a good thing to the game. I think it is, but that is up to you. Now you're going to see the pets come into their own with this Sui, because he gets baited with the Blizzard. So we're going to see the Yak beat on the outer layer of wall. That's going to mean we don't need as many super wall breakers to get to the core. We're going to see the unicorn completely carry the queen. And even the lassie is going to help out the royal champion here. Think of how little value the royal champion got in that attack for boom. She's going to get substantially more value here. So the king and queen coming in. I haven't even talked about super troops. Uh, at town hall 12, Lex did not would not have had access to the super troop. That's why he brought the jump spell for his Sui. Do you think super troops are a good idea? I think the, the super troops like the super bowler is really cool um, and some of the other super troops, but I don't think the super wall breaker is better the game at all. It's just made it a bit easier for everyone. Sneaky gobs, super barbs, I don't think it bettered the game. It's kind of taken the skill out of funneling, but maybe you guys disagree. Uh, yet again, Supercell trying to bring new ways to play the game, but they're kind Kind of undoing the skill of the game and uh, yet again making it easier to get value with the heroes because keep in mind how are you going to do a queen charge and maximize your queen value if you can't wall break your queen so kind of evening out the game for everyone which isn't forcing people to improve now this is a beautiful lalo from rakira's really nicely done uh but i think even maybe he would agree with this if he didn't have pets on this attack there's no way that sui gets the town hall because the queen's probably popping her ability a whole lot earlier the king's not getting as much value the super wall breakers he wouldn't he wouldn't have had enough super wall breakers to get to the core of the base without the yak so beautifully done from rakira's there but pets carry. And now we get to Town Hall 15. Now, obviously, heroes weren't too strong at Town Hall 15, but that wasn't about the heroes. That was about bases, uh, well, base building. Defending was probably a little too easy. You just had to put a couple of rage towers together with a bunch of defenses around, and you'd often get a defense. Obviously, a bit more nuanced than that, but still was a bit bit easier but there's no doubt that heroes got some nice additions you see the phoenix on the king here allowing him to take down that monolith if it wasn't for the phoenix there wouldn't have been able to get it down at all by the way i was just watching that there and all i could think of is well if i had the gauntlet the king would have wrecked the monolith and everything there which is a bit crazy to think about another one you get the diggy finally a pet that can properly help the royal champion doesn't do a great job here and that's what i kind of liked about the diggy like it was handy but it was, wasn't going to turn the royal champion of invisible or anything right it wasn't going to make her completely and utterly busted it just made her really really powerful but obviously even if heroes were too strong at town 15 it, you were never going to nerf them. Defending defense was definitely the king at the time. So there was no point in nerfing them. I still think they were probably quite strong, but we'll never really know because yeah, you weren't, you weren't overkilling bases because of heroes. You needed the heroes to have any chance of three starring, but that's not the part of town Hall 15. I want to highlight. It's time to jump into the lava loon event. And this more than anything is when it starts going downhill. So in October of 2023, we get the Lava Loon event, and this was successful for a number of reasons. Firstly, it completely changed the meta. Now, whether you loved the difficulty at Town Hall 15 or hated it, I'm hoping we can all agree on one thing, and that is there wasn't enough meta shifts throughout the year. In terms of the same attack, the attack strategies that were strong in January were the same exact attack strategies that were strong in December. There wasn't a lot of new strategies. There wasn't a lot of change in the relative strength of the strategies. It was just the same exact meta throughout the year, aside from maybe the introduction of the Super Hog. Uh, 
nothing really changed and I think that's a little disappointing from a game point of view because it doesn't give as much interesting stuff for content creators or players to try new things. Uh, obviously the main reason the event was a success was how easy it was to triple and I know you can't see my face cam from this video that we're showing here but I am three starring this base with my nose. That's why all of these lava loons get dropped on the same tile because you can't really rub your nose up and down on the screen. So yes, obviously the fact that anyone could triple was the main reason that the event was good but it was also so different from the met like from the current meta you went from a defense heavy meta to an offense heavy heavy meta and that got people engaged in the game and it started conversations like this on reddit this mod looks so dull after halloween welcome back to coc reality so obviously someone who liked the fact that you could triple because many people weren't tripling at Town Hall 15 at all. It took a miracle for them to do it. And Darian's response to this is very professional, but in hindsight, it is quite funny. So doing epic events like Clash of Wayne every single month actually has a negative effect on the game. You have to have a down month every so often after an epic one for a couple of reasons. One, if you do them every month, they tend to lose their specialness. I'm sure you can all see where I'm going with that one. We'll get to that in a few minutes time. When clan games first came out, we did a bunch of seven tier games, but we found the participation dropped off, which is why we dro dropped it to a monthly cadence too. Like any game, special events do have grindy elements to them. You, ha you need to let players have a soft reset to take a break before we introduce a new one again. Completely fair enough. Otherwise you burn players out. We'll be bringing back more events like that in the near future, don't worry. So I like that they have the event but they're not gonna do one every month. They're gonna spread it out because it gets people invested in the game and maybe they start playing actively again, but they can't do it too often. Otherwise they're not special anymore, right? And then we come to Town Hall 16 and I mean, where do we begin? Let's try and understand why Supercell did what they did. Now I know Itsu showed this in his video. I've been, I did not copycat, I promise. I've been planning this video for a while and this website is perfect. So December 2022, 97 million players. December 2023, 79 million players. So a big drop. But also have a look at this. So Town Hall 16 comes out. There, in December, there is a peak of 11 million players playing Clash of Clans on one day. One month of Town Hall 16 and it's up to 18 million. Two months of Town Hall 16 and it's up to 22 million. So you also see that there is a gain in the number of players in a month. So it's safe to say, unfortunately, even though this, uh, the last 30 days has been quite bad as you see there, that there is far more active players than there was before. So whether we like it or not, it's working, kind of. I personally like that they've made Town Hall 16 far easier. I'm enjoying it and playing it much more than I was at Town Hall 15. Hopefully the joy is coming through in the videos I'm doing for you all. But I don't like how they've made it easier. Because how have they made it easier? By buffing heroes to the max. I don't even have max hero equipment. I still have high hero equipment because I am a little bit of a, uh, a pay to win person. But still... I don't even have near max hero equipment and I'm at the stage where it doesn't matter what troops I bring in my army comp, I can still triple. If you've been subscribed to the channel, you'll know over the past week and a half, I've been posting videos of me tripling with ridiculous armies, armies that should never triple, but I'm maximizing my heroes and that's how I'm able to get away with the three star. On top of that, and this is what I really don't like about it, hero equipment is pay to win. Now, in my opinion, Clash of Clans has never been pay to win. It's been pay to progress. So you can get further through the game by spending money in it, but you're not gonna be locked out of accessing certain strategies if you don't spend on it. But the Fireball is a perfect example of the game being pay to win. The Fireball, as you've seen in this attack and many of the videos I've done recently, is extremely strong, but it's not compatible with a wide variety of strategies. So if you're gonna upgrade it, you can only use it for a specific purpose. So a lot of the free to play players, if they're gonna upgrade the Fireball, it, it means they have to use a, a substantial number of ores on an attack strategy that they can't use every single time. So why would they do that? So essentially, they're going to spend their ores on, say, getting the healing tome to level 18 or getting the eternal tome to level 18 or upgrading the gauntlet. As stuff that you use in every attack strategy is obviously going to take precedence, which means they're not going to have access to doing these insane hits that I'm able to. And that is almost the definition of pay to win. 
I am able to use the fireball and take down bases differently because I paid. On top of that, you kind of have to get the fireball to level 18 for it to be usable. It's it's a few ores. It's still gettable for most, but if you upgrade it to 18 and you're free to play, it means you're giving up upgrading things that you're going to, you, going to use in 90% of your attacks, and I'm not really happy with that. On top of that, they're releasing the hero equipment way too quickly. Why are they doing that? Because it kind of forces people like me to buy the event pass. Because if I don't buy the event pass, I do not have enough glowy ore to do all of this. You get so many ores from the events, which is good, but I hate that it takes an event to be able to do that. If they released it more slowly, it would definitely be more possible for anyone to be able to upgrade their stuff and play with the game. Because, yeah, locking... I don't know. Locking players out of attack strategies because they don't pay is not okay. It's not what I like about Clash of Clans and it sucks seeing a lot of people in the comments section being like, well, I'm not going to be able to get this. That's, that's not what Clash of Clans is about. This here is my free to play account. Um, as you can see, I've saved up a few ores, but I don't have many stuff that high level. I do have a hog puppet level 18. What a waste of ores that was. But in saying this, I also farm in Legends League and I win 90% of the clan wars I'm in. So I can't imagine what it's like for the free to play players who aren't winning many wars, who are in uh, masters and champs. Getting ores must be really, really difficult. You'll have really low ores. And if you go up against a player that you've got more skill than, but they've got a higher level equipment, they will win because equipment is just broken. And what I don't like about a lot of the new equipment is there's no counter to them. How do you counter the gauntlet? Obviously, we all know the gauntlet is ridiculously broken, but there is no real counter to this at all. It's just dominant. Uh, the fireball don't really have a, a counter to that either. Uh, the frozen arrow does have a counter in the fact that she can die through ability, but anyone who knows what they're doing with it, yeah, there is no counter. Same with like the haste vial, just completely insane that they keep making heroes stronger and stronger. I'm sorry if this video has gone too long. I have no idea how long it will be, but I wanted to show you this. So obviously I'm happy that Clash of Clans is making money. The more money it makes, the more effort they're going to put into the game. But I don't want uh, the money they're making to reinforce the sort of behavior we're seeing from them recently in terms of events. Because as we saw uh, Darian say earlier in the video, events have to have a specialness. But if you have a look at the event this month, this was the most unspecial thing ever. It was just a random super trooper thing. We weren't celebrating any event in real world. At least the last ones were Halloween, Christmas, and Chinese New Year. Now it's just... We have a super dragon, a troop that's already in the game. We didn't even get a new troop in saying that we got new troops last month and the Azure Dragon and the Firecracker were terrible. Um, yeah, they were not used at all. People were still spamming Root Riders. By the way, I'm not even going to talk about Root Riders in today's video. If you'd like to see a specific Root Rider video, because I have one planned, let me know and I'll get going on that soon. But yeah. I don't want the fact that they're forcing us to buy the event pass because they're not giving us any ores. The ore economy is terrible. We have no way to get them. So we're forced to buy the event pass to upgrade to the hero equipment that they're releasing every month. I don't want this to reinforce the behavior that we want events every month. Because I'm telling you, I do not want an event every month. I just want to play the game normally some of the time. I want an event every three months. I want it to be special. I want the event pass to be amazing. I don't like this. Maybe you agree, maybe you don't. Sorry if that was too emotional for you all, but it's just frustrating. I love Clash of Clans, and I don't want to see it get any worse than it is going currently in terms of pay to win, because that is my worst nightmare. So in a perfect world, what changes would I like to see made to Clash of Clans? First of all, it's clear from the player numbers that when the meta is easier than not, more people are playing the game. Now, that doesn't mean we need to make it easier than it is currently. In fact, I would advocate to make it slightly harder, but nowhere near the difficulty of Town Hall 15. Now, I'm going to give you my suggestions now, but please, before you slam me for these in the comments, listen to all of them because they're all going to impact on the meta in different ways. Because my first suggestion is buff every troop in the game except the root rider give a reasonable number of hit points and a little bit of damage to every troop that's in the game because this is going to balance the heavy nerfs that are coming to the hero equipment so the hero equipment that need heavy nerfs like big big nerfs gauntlet invis vile 
Eternal Tome, Healing Tome. All of them last way too long and do far too much damage. And then the uh, other equipment that need minor nerfs are the Rage Vial, Frozen Arrow, Heal a Puppet, Rage Vial, and the Haste Vial. I think all of them need slight nerfs because they're slightly too strong. And when you put those two changes together, plus with a couple of defense upgrades that will be coming in the future, I don't necessarily see the hit rate dropping, but the way people are tripling bases will be so much more satisfying to watch rather than people are just tanking for the heroes and they finish off the base. I just think it's an extremely unsatisfying unsatisfying meta to watch when the heroes are everything. But maybe you disagree. Maybe you like the heroes being strong. I really want to hear all your comments down below. I'll try to get back to every single one of them, but let's most importantly, importantly, be respectful. There'll be a lot of different viewpoints in the comments. So be respectful, be nice, treat people the way you wish to be treated.